So in the next example, we have a non-square matrix. This is a non-square matrix because the left side is not a square. The other one, even though it was technically a three by four matrix, I call it a square matrix because the left side with the with the coefficients like this, for example, this is a square, it's three by three. In this case, we're going to be solving this rectangular matrix. And you'll notice that the solution set is of a little bit of a different nature because of that. So I still wanna take this to row echelon form and then reduced row echelon form. So again, the first thing I need to do is I need to make both of these entries into ones. And I need to make this one into a zero because this is our main diagonal now. You'll notice since this is a rectangular matrix, the main diagonal does not go from the upper left to the bottom right. It starts at the upper left and then it goes as far as it can. So we only have one entry that's under the main diagonal. Well, I say that we should take negative two over row one and add that to row two. We get one, negative one, one, zero, zero to negative one, negative one. Now I'm going to take one half of row two. We're left with one, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, negative one half, negative one half. This is row echelon form, but we're going to continue to reduce row echelon form. We should do row two plus row one. In that case, row two remains the same, zero, one, negative one half, negative one half. And a row one becomes one, zero, one half, negative one half. And this is reduced row echelon form. We have a main diagonal of only ones or zeros. Under the main diagonal, we have all zeros, which is just that one. And above the main diagonal, we have just zeros, which is this one. Notice this one half here, this is not counted as above the main diagonal because the main diagonal only encompasses the first two columns. This third column is not a part of that. So how do we describe this solution set? It might actually be helpful to write these out as equations. The first row says that x plus zero y, so we can cross that off, plus one half z, is equal to negative one half. And the second row says that zero x, so we can cross that off, plus y minus one half z is equal to negative one half. So scrolling down a bit, we could rewrite this more cleanly as x is equal to negative one half minus one half z and y is equal to negative one half plus one half z. So if I wanted to describe the solution set here, I would say that my solution set, my vector, x, y, and z is described by these possible values. It's the set of the following vectors. This is the solution set here. One thing might be standing out to you here. You might be wondering what this at the end means. This means that z is a real number. Z is an element of the set of real numbers. So here's the thing. We're expressing each of these variables in terms of z. The reason why I have a vector of constants and a vector that is multiplied by z is because each variable is equal to a certain constant plus a certain amount of z, and I can express that with vectors where each row corresponds to an equation for each of the variables x, y, or z. So let's just start with z because it's the simplest one. z is just equal to one of itself, and the reason why is because, if you notice, since we only have two equations here, we only had two equations to start with because this matrix only had two rows, we have more variables than we have equations or pieces of information about. So you can imagine that we're going to be lacking a certain amount of specification or detail, and as a result, we might perhaps have infinite solutions. That's in fact what we will have, narrowing down our specifications for what x, y, and z have to be in order to make this vector combination true. You'll notice when we solved this matrix, when we brought it to reduced row echelon form, we had an equation for x, x was equal to negative one half minus z, and y was equal to negative one half plus z, but we never actually had an equation for z. And so we just say that z is equal to itself, where z can be anything. So in other words, the value of z can vary, z can assume any real number value, but whatever value z assumes determines the values of x and y. When we describe the possible values of x, y, and z as a solution set, we say that z parameterizes the set. z is the free variable, that's what we call it, and x and y are the pivot variables. The free variable can assume any real number value, so we just say that it's a member of the set of real numbers, and the pivot variables x and y depend on the value that z assumes. So z is equal to zero plus one of itself, that's certainly true. y is equal to negative one half plus one half z, because again, this second row is one equation. And the first row is one equation. x is equal to negative one half minus one half z. And so we just describe the values of x, y, and z as this set of possible vectors. We're going to look at another non-square case here. This one is going to be different. Instead of having more variables than we have equations, we're going to have more equations than we have variables. And let's see how that complicates things. This is our system here. Again, these are each linear equations, and you can think of what we're asking here as 
what combination of the vectors 1, negative 1, 2, 4, 2, 0 is equal to the vector 1, 0, 1. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take this to row echelon form. So why don't we do row 1 plus row 2 in order to make this negative 1 a 0. And we could also do negative 2 row 1 plus row 2. The first row is 1, 4, 1 still. The second row is 0, 6, 1. And the third row is 0, negative 8, negative 1. All right. Now we just need to eliminate this 8 because that 8 is still under the main diagonal. Remember the main diagonal are these two terms, the 1 and the 6 now. So these are zeros. We just need to make this 8 a 0. 8 sixths row 2 plus row 3. In that case, we would have 1, 4, 1, 0, 6, 1, 0, 0, 1 third. Now we could take this to row echelon form, but right away I'm noticing a contradiction. And it has to do with the third row. The third row says that 0x plus 0y is equal to 1 third. But 0 of anything plus 0 of anything else cannot equal 1 third. It could only equal 0. So this row is false. This is a contradiction. Everything started as equations that we assumed to be true, but right away we're being shown that this is false. This is a contradiction because you can imagine we have more pieces of information, more equations than we do have variables. So there's no evidence that this many constraints on what our variables could be is even possible. In other words, we're putting so many constraints on our variables, but we only have two variables to account for all these constraints that the situation that we've come up with could very well be impossible. We've put three constraints three equations that describe and limit the behavior of x and y on just two variables. And as a result, we've come to the conclusion that this is impossible because we have found a contradiction. And that makes sense because if you think about it, we're trying to add together two vectors in 3D space. These are three component vectors and therefore the vectors exist in 3D space. And we're asking ourselves what linear combination of just two vectors in 3D space is equal to another vector in 3D space. But if you imagine this picture visually, the only way that this vector and this vector by any linear combination could equal this vector 1 0 1 is if all three of them lied on the same plane because if the first vector went off here and the second vector went off here and let's imagine they make this plane for example but then the third vector that we're trying to reach is perpendicular to that plane for example then no combination of these two vectors can equal that one they might equal this vector if it's still on the plane but there's no way that they can go outside of that plane so if we have no such x, y, z, then our solution set x, y, z just contains nothing. It's the set of nothing, which we often write with this symbol, and that means that there is no solution. We'll talk more about this concept when we talk about vector spaces and linear independence.